Okay, so the one death where I did care, that would be the female lead, whose name I do not remember, the one who was helping Sam Winchester find his sister. And I only really cared a little, frankly. So at the end, we realize there was a table saw at this place. And all Jason did to, you know, the people in the tool shed was, you know, use, what, a screwdriver on one of them? I don't even remember what he did to the black guy. About the black guy, this is not racial, but I hate the black guy in this movie. He was utterly intolerable. What, tolerable. What was with the constant, what, is it because I'm black? That hurt my movie-going experience quite a bit. So, I read that Michael Bay walked out during the premiere of this movie, stating that there was too much sex. Here I thought he couldn't get off on anything but explosions and CGI. Scout Taylor Compton wanted a lead role in this. That's just greedy. She's already in the Halloween movies, the reboot and the sequel to the reboot. And that series looks to be getting a third movie. I was quite... The complete asshole behavior of the rich kid towards Sam Winchester is just ridiculous. He doesn't have a problem with inviting these complete assholes that he doesn't like. With no other justification than, I thought we'd have a nice weekend. But, when it comes to a stranger who's clearly, you know, he's got the, the soulful eyes, and he's, you know, he, he cares, and he's a nice guy, even though we find out almost nothing about him. He's just, you know, the stereotype. Oh, I wasn't there for our mother, and she was, and then now she's gone, and I'm back, and I want to find her. You know, yeah, that's as cliche as that shit gets, okay? But the complete asshole behavior of him towards Sam, yeah. The, you know, personally, I would not fuck with Sam Winchester. Do you know the kind of connections he has? I mean, fans of the Supernatural are going to know, and I'm not going to spoil it for anyone else. So, was the rich kid dating female lead, and then fucking that other chick on the side, the one who has stupendous tits, or what? And he was seriously gonna throw her out, you know, without a car, might I add, because she's been gone for eight hours, which he only realized just then, apparently. How come no one in this movie realizes, hey, the other people are gone, maybe we should look for them? You know, it's night time before they worry about, you know, bare-chested blonde dude and his lay, you know. I read that the crew behind this wanted Jason to be a bit like Rambo from the original First Blood, and I can sort of see that, except for, you know, again, how he's putting a lot of effort into killing them in very painful ways. By the way, I did quite like the burning in a sleeping bag death. That was creative. It didn't make sense for someone who wanted to kill, you know, the victim fast and efficiently and who was hiding, you know, covering their tracks, but then again, the Jason of this movie doesn't really make sense because he's hiding and covering up his tracks and yet he's also, you know, making making all this effort to put the people in pain. You know, 
Making an example of someone is not going to work if no one is around to see the example. That's actually kind of why they had the whole, you know, in the medieval times, how they would humili humiliate someone in public. They would have it in, like, the town square so that everyone could see and throw rotten fruit at them instead of eating it. It doesn't make sense to be hiding them. He's also uh, not really doing that good at hiding them, is he? Because he fucks up and forgets the GPS for six weeks, apparently. And there, near the end, he leaves the blonde guy on the back of a truck. Sooner or later, that truck is going to see people, and people are going to notice, hey, that's that kid whose father is really rich, and the police are going to investigate. They're probably going to bring in the frickin' FBI or something, because he's rich, you know. And Jason doesn't exactly seem to mind. It's not like, oh, wait, shouldn't have done that. I hadn't expected him to drive away. No, he's just standing there and... Yeah. So when the rich white kid is told that, you know, something is going on, he insists that the power goes out here all the time. And black guys scream for help here all the time. Hey, this is a retreat for rich white people. I wouldn't be surprised. Also, I am pro-gun control, but even I can say that the depiction of gun handling in this was really over the top on the negative side. Yes, such a thing could maybe happen, but clearly that isn't what happens every single time. They don't go blasting at everyone every single time, you know. So, that chick in the opening, the one who's fucking, I think it is Fran Drescher's dorky kid, and the date of the damsel in distress from Cloverfield. Why is that chick such an odd mix of an exhibitionist and a prude? Like, she's going topless with the other guy right there, but then, you know, she kind of covers up when he turns around, and she's like, is he out there watching us? Wow. And the... blonde guy, you know, standing there and doing the whole... You know, at first he's just doing that, and then he starts, like, smacking that ass and all that. She's standing right next to him. Literally, there's not, like, a few feet between them. Look in the other shot. They're standing right next to each other. How can she not see it? Yes, he does the comical, you know, oh, I'm not doing anything when she turns around, but they're standing right next to each other. How could they not see? It's not like they couldn't have done this in a way that he would be a couple of feet behind her. Maybe he was unloading the car or loading something into it. And then, you know, they're standing a little bit, but they're standing right next to each other. How does that scene make sense? Let's talk about the sister. She did not need to be alive. Just gonna say that because, just gonna put that out there because we don't need, we don't know her. We don't care about her. The only reason to care about her is, you know, oh, she cared for the mother that we don't... It was enough to just have Sam show up and be searching for her. He didn't need to find her. It was a fine enough thing of, you know, that worked. But I didn't care when I found out she was alive. I didn't care about her in the opening. I guess the supposed explanation for her still being alive, you know, and they use that in the ending with, you know, how she's talking to Jason, I guess pretending to be the mother. She apparently is supposed to bear some resemblance to the mother, you know, hence the necklace and everything. So I guess he's been feeding her all this time, and he's just about to kill her, but oh wait, she has the necklace and then he doesn't Seriously, what the hell? False tension, anyone? 
and then she escapes, and then we don't see her for a while. She shows up at the house, and then she gets recaptured, making that entire sequence completely pointless. There was no need for her to escape. Nothing came of it. She didn't make contact with anyone. She was recaptured, and then they had to go and rescue her. That was a complete waste of screen time. More about the ending. Why did they not shove him into that machine? I mean, maybe this is going to sound callous, but with a mass murdering psychopath, I think I would not take any chances there. I mean, unless you accept the ending as just a dream, which I suppose works, and at least they don't show them waking up and being fine like they did in the old ones. Other than that, apparently they removed the chain that was choking him, they drug him out to the pier, and threw him into the water. Also, how did he... When he falls down, he like barely goes through the floorboards, and then he comes up through the floorboards a fraction of a second later. How the hell did that work? Why did he knock down the canoes? What exactly was the point there? So when Asian Dude is in the tool shed, it's actually almost funny when he, you know, he's got the hockey stick and, you know, Jason comes around and he's like, do you, do you want this? And that's sort of funny. But then he goes on to say, because it kind of completes your outfit. No, no, cut. The moment you're spelling out the joke, no. And he apparently uses the black guy as bait, but then he kind of gives up on that after 30 fucking seconds. Was he sure that they weren't going to come out to aid him? It looks like they're just you know, making the assertion, oh, he's using him for, uh, as bait. No, he just hadn't walked over to him yet. That's all. He threw an axe, and he hadn't walked over to him yet. Also around that same time, why is the stupendous titted girl yelling, shut up? No one was talking at that particular time. I did kind of like the pulling of the shower curtain where he's behind her instead. That was surprising. And also the bursting through the wooden wall behind Sam Winchester. Also pretty good. So, yeah. I think that is it for my Attack of the Sequels on Friday the 13th, 2009, the extended cut. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.